I have a sister-in-law. She shared with me a story. She had a relative. Her name was Ida Bloomberg. And she grew up in Shadrin, in a chassidish, real, warm Russian community. She left Russia, like many Jews, and she came to Canada. She came from Hasidic stock, and she had a very real Jewish heart, so she decided she's not working on Shabbos. She got hired in a factory, like many Jewish immigrants, and she didn't show up on Shabbos. You don't work on Shabbos. She came back on Sunday, and they told her, one more time, you don't come on Shabbos, you don't come on Sunday, you don't come on Monday, you don't come on Tuesday. She was stubborn. She didn't come on Shabbos. She was fired. And so she went from factory to factory to factory. You don't work on Shabbos. There's no future for you. How long can a person fight? At some point, she broke. She couldn't. You need bread. You need a place to live. She surrendered. And she did very, very well. She was resourceful. She was smart. She was creative. She was ambitious. She wasn't lazy. And she rose in the factory. Her position was elevated and promoted higher and higher and higher. She did so well for herself. Like every good Jew, she decided, what do I have to work for somebody? And she went on her own. <laughs> and she did amazingly well. And now she had people working for her. And there were branches. She had a kevaldikat sloch. She got married, but she wasn't keeping Shabbos. And she felt hypocritical. I'm not going to keep Shabbos and I'm going to do other things, you know. She let go of a lot of the commandments, the traditions, but the heart, the Yiddish hearts. Years pass. She's very wealthy. She's very affluent. The war is coming to an end, and the Shanghai refugees, those who ran away, were coming back. The group went to Israel, Canada, United States of America. Also a group of Chabad came to Montreal, and they established Yeshiva's Toim Chitmimim in Montreal. They needed a opinion, they needed a structure. And there was no money, this is the early 1940s, there was nothing. She saw up as an ad somewhere that they were looking for a place. So she wrote a letter to the Rebbe Dayats. And she said like this, I don't know if you'll accept my money because I'm not what I used to be. But if you will accept money from me, it would be my privilege to purchase and build a building for the Lubavitch Yeshiva in Montreal. The Rebbe Nayats agreed, thanked her. She built it, she paid for it, and it became a major foundation for the Jewish community in Montreal. One day, she was coming to New York, and she wanted to have the schuss to go to the Rebbe Nayats. The Rebbe saw her, he thanked her profusely for what she did, was very makir and grateful. And he started to give her tremendous amounts of brachas, blessing after blessing. And with every blessing, she felt more and more uncomfortable. Because she had, you know, good old Jewish guilt. <laughs> and she felt that she was simply undeserving of all these blessings. And he was blessing her with kevaldi, kehele, kebrachas, yiddish anachas, teire anachas, chsidish anachas. He was just blessing her abundantly. She had an edelkeit to her. So she felt uncomfortable, but she kept on saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. And the Rebbe was continuing. At some point she says, Rebbe, Genug, Rebbe, enough. So the Rebbe was taken aback. He says, Ich ben genug. Somebody is blessing you and you're saying, Enough, I don't want any more. Why? She says, Rebbe, Ich bin nicht frum. I'm not frum. He looked up. His eyes looked straight at her. He said these words in Yiddish. Tochter meine, mir weisenischt, wer is from. My dear daughter, we don't know who's from. The Rebbe Dayatz was the biggest loichem al chemes Hashem for Torah and Mitzvahs. He didn't know who's from. The Rebbe knew very well. And what he meant to say was, don't allow Torah and Mitzvahs to turn you into a holier-than-thou person. Don't allow religion to become a quagmire. Don't allow religion to make you arrogant. Will you become the representative of God in contrast to everybody else who's inferior to you? When you look at a child, and you look at a bachi, you look at a teenager, remember these words. 
Mirvesen is dvet is flu. Of course, every person needs to put on tefillin. Of course, every person needs to keep Shabbos and to keep Tayyag Mitzvahs Atayra. But don't be fooled by deceptiveness. Don't be fooled by externalities. Tune into Pnimius and you'll see and you'll discover a whole other world. The Yeshiva.net